After 30,000 miles on the BMW F850GS, I've got some things to share. Starting right now on Motor Travel USA. Before I get into the update, if you haven't seen it, I did do a review at 10,000 miles, which you can watch in the link above or in the description. Now, here we go. I wanted to do an updated review and share what I've learned about the F850GS after riding 30,000 miles on it. This bike has taken me on some amazing adventures, both on road and off. It's traveled on the Mid-Atlantic BDR and the Northeast BDR. I've visited the Flight 93 National Memorial, ridden in numerous forests, preserves, and parks, and I've pushed it as hard as my skills will allow. How has it done? Most of what I've shared in the original review still stands, but I did encounter some challenges along the way. So has it been reliable? For the most part, yes, but here are some things to look out for that happened to my bike during these 30,000 miles. To preface this, some of these things can be chalked up to common maintenance or motorcycles in general, and may not be this bike specific. But I did want to bring them up just so people are aware of the things that I encountered. One of the major things to look out for is the steering stem. Mine did loosen up and had to be retightened, which seems to be a common thing with the 850. It's supposed to be done when you first get maintenance at around 600 miles. So just make sure that the steering stem is tightened during that time. Another thing that has happened when I was riding in warmer weather, I would get a warning about the electronic shock not set properly and to ride to the nearest dealer to fix the issue. It turned out that a software update helped alleviate that issue and has rarely shown up since that update. There was also a time when I was riding in the Smoky Mountains when I was getting many warnings popping up and the screen went black. As you can imagine, this was very disconcerting. However, when I pulled over and looked at the bike, the culprit was a loose positive power cable to the battery. Now I've learned to check that cable regularly on long tours because it seems to happen every now and then, maybe because of the vibration. The black screen has never appeared again once I started making sure the cable was tight on longer tours. When it's cold, there have also been times that the bike was slow to start. Although I didn't experience this much since I live in Florida, However, I did experience it a handful of times when traveling and seems to be a relatively common thing with others. If the temp is below 35, the bike can be a little slow to turn over. As I've stated in other videos, maintenance for this bike, because it's taken off-road a lot, has increased dramatically over a street bike. At around 12,000 miles, my rear brake pads disintegrated and had to be replaced along with the rotor. I'd have to think this was a fluke because I haven't read about others having this problem and the replacement has lasted the next 17,000 miles with plenty of meat still on the pad. I also had to replace my chain and sprockets after about 20,000 miles once it had shown signs of stretching. I really noticed it once I completed the Mid-Atlantic BDR and the Northeast BDR, which was thousands of miles of off pavement. I've never had to change my chain that soon on any of my other bikes, so I thought I'd bring it up. Now on the other end of the spectrum, the spark plugs look great each time they've been changed and the valves have been in check each time. In addition, the clutch is responsive and still feels new. The front suspension has held up with no issues and I've had no loss of power or any other issues with the engine. I'm also happy to say that I've never been stranded or broken down at all during this time, no matter how hard I've ridden the bike. As you can tell from the things I've pointed out, all were fixable and most can be chalked up to normal maintenance issues. So am I still happy with the bike? Absolutely. This bike fits exactly how I like to ride, which is touring long distance and traveling off pavement wherever and whenever I can. This bike has handled everything I've thrown at it and taken me on adventures that my street bikes never could. I really like how flexible the bike is and that it can be set up for long touring on just pavement or set up to handle long off pavement rides like a BDR, or even a combination of both. I can set it up for the specific adventure that I'm going on. Since I can't have multiple bikes in the garage, this is a perfect blend of most everything I want out of a motorcycle. But of course there's compromises. 
I'd like a lighter bike for sand or rougher terrain or a bigger bike and engine to power down the highway. But since I can't have all those, I find the F850 GS to be a perfect middle ground to handle most anything that I'm willing to take it on. So the big question, would I buy another one? Well, actually I did. I bought a 2022 version of the same bike. That's how much I've enjoyed this bike and all that it can do. If you still have questions about the F850 GS that I didn't answer in this video, put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to see more videos on motorcycle touring and adventures. Thanks for watching. Now let's go explore.